is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar this morning. We are going to be talking about uh, Dynamics Nav and Office 365. I know we're all excited to get started here. We just want to make a quick reminder to you that this and all of our webinars are recorded. So if you want to watch this presentation again, or if you want somebody else in your organization to see it, you can look it up on our website. It'll be there by the end of today. And of course, our website is Inovia.com. Also, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into that question box. We will get them called out and answered for you. So without further ado, Tom, I hand it right over to you. Thank you, Abby. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Doran, and I'm with Inovia Consulting. Uh, this morning, we're going to spend a little bit of time and, and review the Microsoft Dynamics NAV product. But before I get started, I just wanted to give you a couple of things to think about. And uh, certainly, Microsoft has been giving this a lot of thought. Uh, if you followed their mission, uh, it's basically to empower every person in every organization on the planet to do more. And, you know, what does that mean for you? As you think about it, we, we live in a world that is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, everything is local anymore, including your competition. And so we have to think in our businesses of how do we position ourselves, how do we serve a market, and how do we compete in a world where our competition is closer than they ever were. Uh, buying behavior has changed. People uh, we, were, we were at a conference recently uh, for SPS Commerce, and they talked about the, the little gadget on the far right, right, our phones that we carry a lot around with us. And they predict that over 70% of all buying decisions will be made using cellular phones in the coming years. And so the idea that people used to come to our organization or they visit, look at our catalog, visit our website, um, they, they're they're looking at those things, but they're looking at them via our phone or via some type of social media. And so how we interact with those folks is really important. One of the things to, uh, to try to keep in mind is when things are changing fast, our ability to adapt is key to our ability to succeed. And so, you know, many of us, I'm not going to date myself, but if you think about the blue light specials that we just saw uh, from our friends at Kmart to today, you know, an Amazon drone actually delivering a product to your door, the world is indeed changing. And so what we want to make sure is that we're adaptable to that change and that we and our businesses and our teams can succeed well into the future. And so how do you provide that confidence in your future as an organization? One way is to make sure that you've got dashboards with KPIs and important information right at your fingertips. Another way is to be able to modify and change these dashboards so that they appear to you the way you want them to appear, presenting the most important information right in front of your face. You also need to be able to do this from any time and anywhere. As we move around, as we get outside our organizations, business doesn't stop. And so whether we're on vacation, we're on business travel, we need to be able to stay connected and know what's going on in our business and to be able to respond to our customers. And so what Microsoft's done is try to take some of the tools, you'll recognize this screen as Outlook, uh, you'll recognize this screen, maybe. Uh, Microsoft has spent a lot of time and energy looking at big data and how to make big data attainable for regular size customers. Uh, you know, IBM and GM are all companies that have been using big data for some time. But Microsoft has used Cortana Analytics to now make big data available to small businesses. Here at Inovia Consulting, we've been in business for over 30 years, and we help companies of all sizes. So whether you're heavy manufacturing uh, or a distributor, we've probably got experience in a business that looks a lot like yours. Our team is 50 people strong. We focus only on the Microsoft Dynamics NAV solution. Uh, the fact is that Dynamics may not always be the right solution, but when it is, we believe we're some of the best in the country. And so without any further ado, I'm going to switch over to the product. 
And uh, the product is a little bit different than you might imagine. So I'm starting here in Outlook. And so as you, as you look, uh, Microsoft has invested a lot of time and energy to make their, their core office products one seamless experience with the Dynamics solution. And so you can see here that I've gotten an email from Jeff Bergalski, and he's asking us, he says, please send us a quote for 15 of the item number XYZ. And so if we look, you'll see that we've got a sales quote referenced here. And if I look at the document links, Dynamics actually recognizes this and says, oh, hey, I know what this quote is. It's in your system. Let me bring it up for you. And so now I can see the header of the quote. I could look at the lines on the quote. I can check availability. And I can respond to Jeff just by hitting my respond button and work within Outlook. If I have a few questions before I respond to Jeff, maybe I want to look at their outstanding balance. I want to see here, you know, in red, it's telling me we've got some past due invoices. And so you can see that very quickly, I can interact and respond right from the place that many of our users live day to day, which is in their email. But more users will likely uh, li reside right in the product. And so now we're looking at the main interface for Dynamics NAV. And a couple of things just by way of uh, a quick introduction, you'll see we're in a president of a small business's role center. These are meant to be uh, soup starters. So as I move through a couple of these roles, remember that your role center will likely look different because the information that you find important will be right in front of your face. These are all customizable by you. So I could go in and change this page. I can move things around on the ribbons. I can decide what shows up and what doesn't. And this was really important. Microsoft did a lot of research over the past 10 years and they went out to end users and they said, hey, would you just let us watch you work a little bit? And from there, they, they spent time in the shipping departments. They spent time in accounting departments. They spent time with salespeople, with small business owners. And they came away with a few important themes. One of them was, look, software is too complicated. I, I get all this clutter. I don't know what I'm supposed to respond to. Can you make it easier for me to see the things that are important to me? And so they developed these role centers. And so in the middle, in the blue boxes, you'll see we have these cues. And so it's given me a quick synopsis of what's going on in my sales, what's going on with purchasing, what's going on with receivables. At the click of a button, I could uh, set up a new customer, fire off a new order. Um, on the right-hand side, I get a little bit more traditional dashboard information. So here we're looking at cash flow the lifeblood of all of our businesses. And so I want to make sure that I see a good trend line. What's going on with my cash? If I've got a question, maybe I want to take a look at the receivables that are here that uh, boost our cash flow. I can drill in and I can get right at that information at the click of a button. And then just by clicking back, I'm right back at the role center where I was working. So if things change throughout the day and something catches my eye as the operator of a small business, very quickly I can either answer the question myself or I can respond and send out to a customer, hey, look, I want to find out, or sorry, I said customer, what I meant is one of my team members. So I could ask a question. Maybe I looked at one of those sales orders or invoices in my dashboard and I wanted to find out more information on that. And so I can open one of these up and it'll bring it right to my uh, screen and I can see what's going on with this order. And so not only am I able to, whoops, ask my question, but I'm also able to keep a log of all the interactions that have gone back and forth with it. Down the left-hand side are shortcuts. So I can find a way to easily get to the things that I do periodically, while still, as long as I have security, have access to the things that I wanna do maybe less often. So if I go through and I open up my departments, 
The other thing that Microsoft heard is, look, the, we need to make the pricing simple. And so, you know, how many times have we bought a computer software system only to find out that, oh, yeah, that piece didn't actually come with what we bought? The way Microsoft has bundled their pricing, they have a simple starter pack for very small businesses, and then they have the extended pack for a larger enterprise. And if you have uh, either one of those packs, you're going to get everything that comes bundled in. So you're not going to have to worry about what do I get and what don't I get? And as you can see, Microsoft Dynamics NAV handles everything from financial management, cost flow, cost accounting, sales and CRM, and we'll spend a little bit more time on that CRM piece in a second. All your purchasing, warehouse management, manufacturing, including bills and material, routing, planning, uh, resource planning, so if we're a job cost and we do engineer by design, maybe we want to track our jobs or we want to track installation services. We also have a full man service management solution built in, so I can manage my warranties, I can manage service departments, I can dispatch field teams. And then we have our human resources so that we can help to uh, manage our teams and make sure that our training and everything is up to date. The other thing that they said was, look, I, I, I tend to get confused in the software. And so Microsoft put a little home button over here. So just by clicking home, it brings me right back to where I start my day and where I live most of the time. Now, as I mentioned, the roles were designed by speaking to lots of different people. So one of the ways that we find things within Dynamics NAV is a simple search. And so if I start to type user, you'll see that it'll find anything that has those words contained in it. So I'll bring up my user personalization, and this one is me. And I can, ex I'll expand this just a bit. So you can see right now I'm set up as the president of a small business. But Microsoft created lots of these roles. So there are everything that you can imagine, accountants, bookkeepers, dispatchers, machine operators. In this case, I'm gonna go over to my sales and relationship manager, and I'll hit OK, and then it's going to, I have to restart this to get that to load. Uh, but as I bring log in here, you'll see that the experience is going to look significantly different. And so, what that means is that each person in your business will have the opportunity, whoops, fat fingers. Oops, can't type this morning. There we go. Um, so that your people in customer service or your people in the shipping department will have the screens that are most important to them. And so now I'm in the sales and relationship manager screen and CRM is a growing and uh, very significant part of most businesses. And so as a senior leader, maybe I'll decide I want to have the pipeline right on my screen. Um, as a salesperson, I might want to have my pipeline on the screen, but I don't need to hold, have the whole company's pipeline on the screen. You'll notice that I've got some uh, red and green highlights here. And so I can set up KPIs just by when I hit set up cues, it'll show us the, how we determine what's good and what's bad. And so I can determine how I want my screens to appear so that it flags me that, hey, I've got an overdue opportunity that needs to be followed up. So very quickly, as a sales manager of this organization, I can keep an eye on my top opportunities, I can see my overall sales, um, and I can see my overall pipeline. Now, where we also live as salespeople and many other folks in the organization is that we wanna manage a to-do list. And so this is everything that's open that I need to work on. Microsoft will present a lot of these, a lot of this information in the full. And so once you learn how to navigate one area, you'll know how to navigate them all. And so I could sort in this list. I could search on any of those fields. Uh, in this case, maybe I just want to see Peter's activities. And so if I filter to this value, It'll quickly take my list and it'll say, okay, here's everything that Peter needs to do. 
And many of our organizations will have inside salespeople that help support our field sales team. And so maybe I've got an inside salesperson that's here to support Peter. And so if I hit save view as, I could say Peter to do. Uh, and so now if Peter's gonna be out of the office or maybe I'm a sales manager that's gonna help coach Peter a little bit, I can see that Peter's to-dos are right on my list as well. So I can click on that, I don't have to refilter it, it's all right there for me. So very easily I can go through and I can see what I have to do today, I can follow up on all those activities. Uh, you can see that there are notes over here so I can enter my notes very quickly and easily. And all of that leads us to the opportunities and everybody gets really excited. I'm gonna go back to the role center. One of the things that I've learned over the years in talking to lots of business owners is that many times they'll go out to a conference or they'll be in a seminar or they'll talk to a friend and they'll see these pipelines and everybody gets all excited about the sales funnel and they want to have a better visibility into what's going on. But all of that comes from the data in your system. And so the fact that Microsoft Dynamics NAV has all of this information completely integrated within one system, gives it a power that far exceeds many of the standalone systems that are available in the market today. And so if I go in and maybe I wanna look at my sales cycles, because this is what actually drives your pipeline. And so you can set these up so that they work any way you like, but in this case, I'm gonna look at the existing customer large account sales cycles. And so if I look at my stages, now I can see here's the steps that we typically go through when we're working with one of our large accounts. Again, these are meant to be soup starters. So your sales process would sit right here. So you'll have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you lay out your sales cycle. But here's where the funnel gets fed. So when I start to say, hey, I'm at the first step, and when we're at the first step, we close 2%. When I get to a demo unit, I close 35%. If I get a quote out, 70%, so you get the idea here. We can also add some rules and some structure around our process. So I can determine whether or not I want a sales person to skip a step. Maybe I wanna say, hey, within an initial first phone contact, within a week, I want the next step to occur. So I can set all of this up and make sure that my team is able to follow the process and we're able to have a pipeline that not only looks visually interesting, but actually gives us the information that helps us better plan for our business cycles. So all of this can be handled from one screen. The next place that we might go are campaigns. So as we start to work on driving our business, we'll run some marketing campaigns. And so in this case, I've got to increase sales event. And so who are we going to market to? Well, that's another interesting area inside of Dynamics. So if I go in and I want to have some profile questions. No, I think I need question here. There we go. So if I go to my questionnaire setup, you can see that I have lots of different kinds here. So when we start to work on our demographics, uh, there was a, a great speech in Chicago a couple of years back, and one of the, the presenters said, you know, there, there's a fine line between mass harassment and mass communication. And when we want to communicate with the people who we do business with or the people we hope to do business with, the way we can personalize that communication is by knowing a little bit more about them. So you can see I have a company here, I have customers, I have leads. But if I look at a company first and I hit my questionnaire setup, you can see several things. Again, you set these up, but in this profile, maybe I wanna know the size of the company. Are they publicly traded or how are they owned? How many of the contacts within my database fit this profile? So that if I'm having a conversation with one customer, 
maybe I can just click right in here and it will tell me the other people who are like them. Again, with Microsoft's purchase of LinkedIn last year, we're going to be able to combine the power of LinkedIn with our profile questionnaire setups and be able to link and get referrals much more effectively right within our system. If I click down and look at a person, you'll see that that questionnaire looks substantially different. So this is more demographics related to an individual. And so what this allows us to do is communicate with people in a way that they want to be communicated with. If, uh, if I'm having a conversation and I'm following up and maybe, maybe I'm talking to one of the hundreds and hundreds of people that work within the clients of Anovia. Well, the fact is, I want to be able to remember your kids' names. I want to be able to remember that you like golf or tennis and not hunting. But the fact is that there's a limit to what I can keep track of. By using these profiles, we can build this up so that when I pick up the phone or someone has an inbound call and I bring your contact record up in front of me, I'm quickly reminded of the things that are important to you so that I can tailor my conversation and my message to something that's going to resonate. But beyond the, those phone inter interactions, we also have the marketing where we started. So if I go and look at a marketing segment, you can see that I have all of these folks loaded as targets for this particular marketing campaign. And how that happened is I went in and I added contacts. And so now you can see a screen that will become a little more familiar, familiar but I can filter by regions, I can filter by profiles like we were just talking about. So let's show me everybody that fits a particular demographic. And then I can put filter by what are called value entries. So because this is all built right into your ERP system, I can say, hey, maybe I want to find all the people in the Northeast that have bought a product in the past but haven't bought it recently or possibly I'm adding a new product that might be complimentary, so I'm looking for a cross-sell opportunity. So I have a lot of flexibility here in terms of how I tailor my campaigns. And then from there, I can monitor the statistics of my campaign. So I can see how many opportunities came, what are the estimated value of that opportunity. And I can click in, any place we see the blue screen, we can click right in, and we can see what's going on. Uh, we can determine you know, whether we're winning or losing and whether our marketing dollars have been well invested. So as you can see, there's a lot of power right at your fingertips from a CRM perspective that's baked right into Dynamics NAV. So where things tend to happen are with the items and products that we sell. And so as we look here, We've got all kinds of different inventory. And I can see down the right that I've got fact boxes. The other thing that Microsoft heard is, look, I need information a little more quickly. I don't want to have to open the actual item card every time I click on it. So here I can see costing methods. I can see profit. I can see ordering information. But from time to time, I will need to get to that item card. And so again, I'll click on my little a uh, blue link here, it'll open up my item card. And in this case, I'm looking at the bicycle. Microsoft spent a lot of time simplifying screens. The other thing that folks said was, look, it's too much information. And so again, with our customize button, we remember from earlier, I can go in and determine for each section of this bike, you'll see I have a show more fields. So I've determined the things that I want to see right on screen, but I can click that button once and it will add more fields so that I can see everything. But at a glance, it's going to show me the things that I've said are important. So it gives me a descriptive unit measure, shows me what I have on production orders, what I have out on sales orders. Again, the blue items are always uh, drillable. And so what makes Microsoft particularly powerful is that we have this full 
manufacturing capability baked right in. So you can see I have my bills of material and so I can click down and I can actually see how is this item made. Uh, once I'm in the bill of material, if maybe I'm part of the engineering team or I've got somebody that wants to do something custom, I can manage version numbers, I can keep a complete uh, record of all my change orders, I can do uh, R&D, so I can do development bills of material long before they would hit my system. So it allows me to track things. It also allows me, we have many customers that have products that vary by seasonality. So it's essentially the same product, but maybe based on the season, it varies just slightly. And so I can track my versions. Uh, I can also do any where used reporting right from a click of a button. So you can see that the bills of material are quite handy and easy to use. Again, our routings, and so all the power that we see in drag and drop scheduling and all the uh, fancy bells and whistles that people like to talk about, just like in our CRM, it starts with our data. And so again, in my routing, I can see the work centers that it goes through. I can track my setup times, run times. Uh, if I've got scrap that I know I lose at a particular uh, stage of the process, when I think about my scheduling, am I able to run things concurrently? Can I send part of the batch ahead to the next uh, step if I completed it at the preceding step? And again, my versions are, are tracked as well. So a lot of power uh, relative to manufacturing. Serial and lock control is completely baked in as well. So you're able to uh, do complete recall management both up and down your supply chain. Within seconds, I can determine if a supplier has notified me of a bad part that I know went in or in our food customers, if I had a bad ingredient and we heard from the farm that there might be an issue, I can determine where that is, not only inside my building, but if it's been produced and it's out in the supply chain, who got it? and I can notify them within seconds. All right, so then as I draw down the right again, you can see uh, we store a picture of our items if that's important. We support forecasting all built right into the product. I also have drag and drop capability. So if I have design documents, maybe I've got CAD drawings, or things that I want to have at the drop of a hat, I can drag and drop those right to this uh, little box here, and it will uh, enable my team to get at that information quickly and easily. Again, reporting becomes important as well. So as I think about uh, how my business is doing, maybe I want to see. Uh, my bills of material breakdowns. And so I could go in and I can print a quick report. I could also do this on screen, but it would show me how my cost shares are distributed for this particular item and where they're being rolled up, both for my material and for my labor and overhead. So let me switch back to my home screen quickly here. So the next place we will look at our customers and contacts. And so if we think about our contacts, you'll notice that we've got some darker font and some lighter font. So when you see just light font, that tells you that that's a contact, they're not associated with a company. If they're associated with a company, then you can see these three folks are all with Gibson's Law Firm. And again, maybe I want to find uh, Mindy Martin. So if I type Martin, you'll see that it's also searching the entire screen. So Benjamin Martin, Martin Lots. In this case, here's Mindy. So I was looking for Mindy Martin. Again, I can see at the drop of a hat how many opportunities we have, how much business is open. Um, 
And maybe I want to take a quick look at the statistics from Mindy. She's on the phone. She's not happy. And I want to figure out how good a customer is she. So I can look at her opportunities. I can see anything that's going on. Maybe she's asked a question about another quote. And so I could ask about these opportunities that are also open to see what I might be able to do to move those forward. Um, so then I can, I can interact with uh, Mindy at the click of a button. So if I want to make my notes, I can quickly move through here. I can determine what's going on and then everyone will be able to see all the interactions just by looking at the interaction entries. And so when I want to find out what's been going on with a customer, when I bring it up, oh, Mindy was a bad example, but it would have shown me everything that's been going on for that prospect, whether it's mail or phone calls or emails, all of that would have been uh, available so that we can operate more effectively as a team. So once they're customers and they're in the system and they're doing business with us, again, we get our fact boxes down the right. And so as I'm working through, you know, maybe I want to find people that have uh, large balances. And so I can sort on my balances and see just the people that have the largest balances. So I can pay attention to that and help manage my AR a little bit more effectively. Down the right, I can scroll down. I can look at all my statistics. If I click on the Canon group here, we can see that I've got an overdue amount. And so as I'm on the phone, I can open up my overdue balances and you know what do they say to us oh you know we didn't get that well i can quickly dump this out to excel and i can send it to them right from this screen so that way i can make my calls i can do my follow-ups and i could also make my notes and so if i went into the canon group i could find out you know who else has been talking with them and what have they been talking about so it gives us the opportunity uh, to do a more effective job. The other thing that Microsoft has done is they heard a lot from people about how do we make it easier for us to do the right thing the first time. And so when I go in, I'm going to click on workflow just for a second. And so when I look at my workflows, you can see that Microsoft has developed a bunch of templates. Again, this is soup starter, but if I open up these templates, I can look at finance, I can look at sales and marketing. And so all of the common things that we do, customer credit approvals, new item setups, uh, sales approval for documents maybe that exceed a certain a dollar amount same for purchasing and so all of these are baked right in you don't have to create them from scratch but it does also provide you with a template that you can use to develop your own custom workflows and so it helps us make sure that we can see to it that our policies and procedures are followed easily and quickly systematically within our business that helps to improve a customer experience it helps to improve uh, customer satisfaction. And frankly, it improves our employee satisfaction because it, no one likes to have to go back and redo a job or to hear from their manager that something got messed up. And so by using our workflows, it enables us to better ensure that we do the right job the first time. So now if I go back to my departments for just a second here, and I want to just show you service management for a minute. So service management, complete dispatch boards. It'll show us everything that we have going on. I can see the demand for my teams, everything that's happening, uh, who they're working on. I can filter all of this. So if I want to see just a particular service team or a particular part of the country, I can do that. I can handle my resource allocations. I got an issue. Uh, where I can't staff things or I need particular skill sets, it makes it easy for me to find that. If I back up here, 
It also allows us uh, to set things up so that my troubleshooting is easier. So I can load into the system fault codes and reason codes so that I can help the people on the phone try to help the customer the first time. This also helps our field service teams so that if they're walking through, they can record those fault, fault codes and service codes as well. So service management is a, uh, a very robust piece of our solution and gives us a lot more flexibility than many of the other systems on the market. The next place I'll go is jobs. And so job cost and productions using jobs is, uh, is an important part of a lot of engineering companies. And so we have a job cost system that enables us to track profitability. Uh, you know, I can click statistics on any job and at a glance I can see where I am, uh, both from a resource and material, and whether I think I'm going to get, uh, you know, I'm ahead or I'm behind on this particular job relative to the budget that I've set up. I can handle a variety of WIP solutions, and so we handle five. Uh, types of WIP right out of the box. You can also set up custom WIP um, that enables you to do a, a really nice job. Uh, and then we provide the accounting folks uh, a WIP cockpit. And so the WIP cockpit, you know, calculating and managing our WIP is a big issue in a lot of firms. And so this allows us to go through and recalculate WIP based on transactions for the period. It'll show us whether we're over or under invoiced on a job, and it really gives us a lot of power right at our fingertips to ensure that we're doing the right job managing our resources, recognizing our costs and our revenue, and making sure that we understand whether we're winning or losing on a particular job. You can see uh, that there's a lot of other flexibility here in terms of our warehouse management solutions. But purchasing and planning is where I'm going to go next. And so as I start to look, and I'll just go to a planning worksheet. And so as I bring up my planning worksheet, this is where we determine everything that we want to buy or make. And so as I delete this, because it is a worksheet, so I want to just see what I want to see. I can add or subtract as I want. But it's going to blow through our MRP here, and then it's going to allow me to create a new purchase planning and production planning uh, suggestion right from this planning window. And so it gives us the chance to say, hey, do I want to see only particular items? Do I want to see uh, full MPS, am I looking at just MRP? What's the date range that I want to run? If I'm using forecasting, do I want it to consume the forecast? And at what point do I want it to ignore the forecast? But once I hit this, it'll run, and it's going out and it's looking at all of our stock. It's looking at everything that we have in production. It's looking at all of our open purchase orders. And then it's going to come back and it's going to say, okay, based on everything that I've seen and based on the demand that I see from quotes and orders, here's the things that I think you need to either produce or purchase to make sure that you can meet your demand. And so um, we'll give it just another second here. We're almost done. So it's going to show me, hey, look, I had a problem with a few of these items. You should take a look at these. And so I click OK. And it pops it up and it lets me know, hey, here's the items I had trouble with. You should go in and have a look at those. But now that I've looked, now it's given me all the information I need to help me understand whether I want to actually follow this recommendation. So again, maybe I know something the system doesn't. So I could change this to 300. Uh, I can check order tracking lines so I can determine where did this order come from. Uh, it gives me a lot of uh, insight. You know, when you put in one of these systems, one of the things that we hear most often is that people don't trust the system right away. They've been using a spreadsheet or they've been using their clipboards for so long. 
And so giving them the opportunity to figure out what they, why the system told them to do what they wanted to do, then it gives them faith to actually follow what the system has recommended. And so, you know, if I only wanted to plan uh, for the bicycle, I, again, I could filter just the way we were showing earlier. So now I'm just seeing my bicycle items. I can release that filter just by coming up here and hitting enter. And now I've got, got everything back. And then once I get down to uh, my purchased items, I could then start to filter. So maybe I want to focus on just a particular item type. So as you can see here, I can determine how I want things to work. And so in this case, I'll filter to this item. And then I could go through and I could carry out an action message. So basically, once I've determined I like what I see, I want to uh, actually do a few things. I can hit my check boxes and then I can say carry out the action messages. And so what that's going to do is give us a little bit of opportunity to say, hey, look, maybe I've got purchasers that handle this particular item. So I'm going to push that to a requisition worksheet for them to handle. How do I want my production orders created? If I've got assemblies, how do I want that to happen. And so once I, uh, oh, and transfer orders, I forgot to mention that. So we also, if you've got a hub and spoke environment, it will also recommend the transfer orders so that I'm keeping appropriate stock levels at my various facilities. And so what this engine then drives is the ability in the sales area so if i go look at a sales order you'll see that we have the ability to do uh capable to promise and available to promise and so what that says is hey i want to understand when could i in fact sell one of these things and so if i open up this order and I want to look at my order promising, I can see that I've got a bike on this order. If I go into order promising, it will allow me to determine when my first available date is. Oh, my sales order is not open. But, so, let's see if I can reopen this. Actually, I'm going to pop out of here. And so what that will allow us to do, let's see if I've got an open sales order for us. But the capable, and I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to stop. But capable to promise and available to promise basically blow through our entire capacity system. And it says, hey, look, this is when I can get this ready if it follows just the normal process. The other one is, hey, if I move some things around, here's the earliest possible date I could get it to a customer. So when a customer's on the phone and they're asking us questions about their order, we can give them right within customer service a reliable answer, which helps us build credibility with our customers and also helps us uh, improve our communications within the firm. So, uh, coming up on our time, and I want to make sure we have enough time for questions. So, Abby, do we have questions? We do have a few questions, Tom. Our first question here, how much does Dynamics Nav cost? So, the pricing is meant to be fairly simple. It's $5,000 for the uh, starter pack and it's ten thousand dollars for the extended pack so if you felt like you needed everything it would be fifteen thousand dollars that comes with three users and then additional users are purchased uh, individually and those are either six hundred dollars for a limited user um, people often ask so I'm gonna ask I'm gonna answer a tangent uh, right here but a limited user if you think about uh, folks that just come in to look up uh, information, maybe they're running a report. Um, everyone bristles, but if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. 
CEOs are excellent limited users. Uh, they're not actually posting a lot of transactions typically. Uh, so anybody that's going to do a look-see can get that $600 user. For main system uh, users that are going to post transactions, uh, those are $3,000. Okay, great. Our next question, what if we're running another Microsoft Dynamics product and want to switch to NAV? Uh, that's a great question, and I know that our friends uh, running GP and SL uh, it's a bit of a nervous time based on a lot of the uh, changes at Microsoft. Microsoft has put great programs in place to help with the transition. So if you're a, a GP customer or an SL customer that's looking for uh, what do you do when it's time to upgrade the next time, uh, we do have plans and uh, to give you get you some credit for the money you've already invested. Our next question. Does it work for food companies? Uh, yes, actually, we have several food companies that are Inovia clients. Um, I actually came out of a, a frozen food manufacturing background. Um, so we've, we've developed uh, a lot of solutions that help with uh, catch weights and truck routings and market pricing, uh, a lot of things that pertain not only to food manufacturers, but food distributors as well. And our final question here, Tom, we're hearing a lot about Dynamics 365. Is this the same product? Well, it's a, it's a similar product. So they run on the same code base. So in its DNA, it's the same product. Dynamics 365 is really designed for those folks that um, have a very simple business, and they're looking to get up and running for maybe you know, 40 or $50 a user per month. Uh, it's a great solution. We do support because Dynamics 365 is essentially NAV. Uh, it is a product that we support, and uh, our customers that run Dynamics 365 have been very, very happy. But this is a little bit of the big brother solution. So, if you're looking for a little bit more robust functionality, um, then Dynamics NAV would be the, the step for you. And um, so they're not the same, but they're very similar. Okay, well, we just want to remind everybody that we did record this session. So if you want to watch it again later, if you want somebody else in your organization to be able to see it, just visit our website, which is Innovia.com, and the recording will be posted there by the end of the day. And we just want to thank you for attending, and we'll look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.